Lesson 4.4, Proving and Applying ASA and AAS. In this lesson, we're going to learn two unique new types of groupings to prove triangles congruent. Just like SAS and SSS, it's important to note the location. In order to apply angle side angle, you need to know two angles and the included side. Take a look at triangle MLN. We have angle M and angle N. They match up with angles S and T, respectively, in the other triangle. And then we have side length MN and side length ST. That's an angle side angle grouping. If you have those markings and two triangles, the triangles would be congruent. Over on the right, we can use two angles and a side differently. AAS, now notice the order. Two angles and then either of the non-included sides. So take a look at this. We have angle U and angle V, and then segment VW is over here on the right. Same thing in the next triangle. We have angles X and Y, and then segment YZ. Here we have an angle, angle, side grouping. Now if either of these scenarios is true, you can prove triangles congruent. It's also important to note that you can apply CPCTC here as well, just like we did in, in 4.3. Okay, So let's put that to the test down below. Example 1. What is the relationship between triangle AXB and triangle AYB? Taking a look at these figures, notice angle A is 25 in both triangles. Angle B is also the same in both triangles, both 45. And segment AB is equal to segment AB in each triangle. Notice we've got an angle-side-angle angle configuration. Therefore, the relationship between the two triangles is that they are congruent. Triangle AXB is congruent to triangle AYB by the angle-side-angle angle congruence theorem. Example 2. Describe a series of transformations that would show triangle JKL is congruent to triangle MNO. So if we wanted them to match up with each other, that means angle K would have to match to angle N, angle L would have to match to angle O, and KL would have to match to segment NO. To get this to happen, what we could do is we could rotate just a little bit triangle JKL and then glide it over to match up with triangle MNO. So if we rotated triangle JKL just a little bit first, that would be a rotation. And then if we glide it over to the right, that's a translation. And that's one way to map them onto each other from a pre-image to an image that would show the two triangles are congruent. Let's try this application question. It says a technician installs cables from a cell phone tower to the ground. To pass inspection, both cables must be the same length. Does the installation meet the cable length requirement? Explain. If we look at this picture, notice we have a triangle on the left-hand side and a triangle on the right-hand side. Now the tower is in the middle, and what's unique about this picture is that the tower is congruent to itself in both triangles. Notice we have angle 52 on the top left and angle 52 on the top right. Now, taking a look at the bottom, if we have a right angle on that left-hand side, we can conclude we have a right angle on the right-hand side as well because they form a linear pair. Now, if we look at the markings, on each triangle we have an angle, we have the side, and then we have another angle. That would mean the triangles are congruent because of ASA. So does the installation meet the cable length requirement? The answer is actually going to be yes. The triangles are congruent because of the angle side angle congruence theorem. And the cables are then sides that aren't already marked. 
So we know the definition that allows us to state in any triangle, corresponding parts are congruent if the triangles are congruent. So we can say then the cables are congruent by our fun little CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, take a moment and see if you can determine which triangles are congruent in this picture and how do you know, or in this grouping. We have triangle JKL, triangle MNO, and triangle RQP. Which triangles are congruent and why? If we look at triangle JKL, notice we have an angle side angle grouping. Now if I try to match up corresponding parts with triangle MNO, I see that M also has a single arc like J, MN is the side like JK, and then angle N is like angle K with the double arc. We could then say triangle JKL is congruent to triangle MNO by the ASA congruence theorem again. But if we look at triangle RPQ, notice we have a single arc for P, excuse, yeah, single arc for P, a single arc or double arc for angle Q, and then side RQ doesn't have the same grouping. So side or triangle RPQ doesn't match with either of the given triangles because the order of the marked values isn't the same, it isn't corresponding. In example four, we're going to incorporate just a little bit of algebra. It says what allows you to find the value of x and what is the value of x. If we take a look at the given information, we have an angle that matches in each triangle, a side, and again, another angle. Whoops, that gets a double arc. So we know that the triangles are congruent by ASA. Lots of symbols in that statement right there. And if that's true, remember anything that isn't marked is then congruent by CPCTC. So that would mean this angle on the left and this angle on the right would be equal to each other. So we can then say 5x minus 1 is equal to 4x plus 8 by CPCTC. So that's what allows us to make this happen, but then we have to find the value of x. So now we've got to do some algebra. Notice we have 5x on the left and 4x on the right. Let's move 4x over simply by subtracting. That would give us 1x minus 1 equals 8. To get x by itself, we have to add 1. And if we add 1 to the right, x will equal 9. And there you go. Example 5. Can a rigid motion map triangle ABC onto triangle DEF? Well, notice angle A needs to correspond with angle D. AC needs to correspond to DF. And angle B needs to correspond with angle E. It looks like you can just glide or translate triangle ABC to make that happen. Our rigid motion then would simply be a translation. And that would make the two triangles congruent, this time by angle, angle side. So now question four, kind of the same idea. Use the figure shown, describe a sequence of rigid motions that would map JKL to triangle QRP. Well, if we look at JKL, J has to map all the way to Q, K has to map all the way down to R, and KL has to kind of flip upside down and rotate to P or to RP. So it looks like if we rotated this triangle 180 degrees and just make J go on the top, L go over here, and K go to the bottom, that would be a rotation. And then we could take it and glide it over to the right or slide it over. So we could say then followed by a translation. And that's easy enough to help justify another angle angle side grouping. Just a couple of examples left. In this next picture or next example, it says state whether each pair of triangles is congruent by SAS, SSS, ASA, 
or AAS, or if the congruence cannot be determined. If we look at the first two triangles, notice we've got an angle with a double arc. Here's an angle with a double arc. We've got a side and then another angle to the right. So both triangles have that ASA grouping. That's how we can tell that they're going to be congruent by ASA. Let's try the next one. This one should be pretty easy. If we have one dash here and one dash here, there's a side, double dash at the bottom, double dash up here at the top, another side, and then we've got a triple dash. And that would be one third, a third side that matches up in each triangle. So pretty straightforward there. SSS would allow us to justify that those two triangles are congruent. Next one, down at the bottom left. Here we've got two angles that are marked. So I've got angle here and an angle here. And now notice the side is up above, so it's not included. And if I look at the other triangle, I have an angle here and another one here, and the side is not included. Therefore, that's an AAS grouping. All right, last but not least, let's see if we can justify this last one. We talked a lot in 4.3 about side, angle, side, and side, side, side. To, in order for side, angle, side to work, the angle has to be included. So we've got this side and this side with an angle in between. And then this one has this side and this side, but the angle's not in between. Since the two triangles don't have the correct SAS grouping, we would say here that no congruence can be determined. It's always important, let's see if I can get this to fit. That's important too. Here we go, hang on, slide this over here. It's always important to make sure you know that there's corresponding parts that are matching. And in this case, that didn't happen. For our last example, we're going to step it up a notch from what we did in 4.3. In 4.3, we came up with a plan, if you would, to show how you can prove something specific in two congruent triangles. But a formal proof, remember from topic 1B, has given information and then your final step. So we want to start with this information and end with this one. So steps one and three. Now, here's the trade-off, everybody. We have to fit all of this into step one here. So let's see if we can squeeze that in. GH is congruent to KL. And those are segments, so they put a segment bar up on top. And then angle GFH is congruent to angle KJL. I'm gonna write the other congruent statement just right above it to get it to fit. So then I'm gonna write angle FGH is congruent to angle JKL. So remember, we always start off with a given, and the reason we do so is so that we can use that information to try to come up with other statements. If we're asked to prove just part of the triangle, the process is going to include either SAS, SSS, ASA, or AAS. So all of this given information leads us to our picture with angle F and angle J, a double arc on G and a double arc on K, and then GH and KL. We've already stated all those statements are true because of the given information. If we look at the grouping, I notice for triangle FGH, we've got angle, angle, side, and that matches with JKL as well, angle, angle, side. So the next thing you'd want to state is that congruence comparison for the two triangles. So something like this, triangle FGH, we'll just use the same kind of ordering as up above, is congruent to, although that symbol doesn't look very good, let's fix that. So is congruent to triangle JKL because of the angle, angle side congruence theorem. And then we go back to the good old standby. How do we prove that something that isn't already marked would be congruent? Anything that isn't already marked, once you prove the triangle's congruent, is true because of CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And that's a formal proof approach to these triangles. This is lesson 4.4.